Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David, the channel for husbands who really want to do that circumnavigation but really can't do it alone and need to convince their beautiful wives that this is a tremendous post-retirement project. It's a big task, but I'm in there for you. Today's boat is a really unique newcomer to the catamaran world, the Windaloo 54. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. As always, we have a wine pairing with our yacht today, and today we're going to the Southern Rome to uh, Domaine de Seigneur. And it's a Chateau Neuf du Pape. And uh, let's see what we have. As you know, my wife and I cruised this area in France on our honeymoon and uh, actually got to see the amazing vines in the uh, Chateau Neuf de Pape area. They're all about, I don't know, less than five feet tall. They're on a red dirt, no, a red rock around the roots that holds the uh, heat in at night and uh, we uh, have to cut all but eight bunches of grapes off of each vine and they're not permitted to irrigate, to use insecticide or anything unnatural. So it's, it's quite a remarkable area. Let's see what we have here. Domaine de Seigneur. Chateau Neuf de Pape. Wow, that, wow, that's it. Let's just go to the boat. The Windaloo uh, 54 is really a handsome boat. It was the first one I saw when I walked up the uh, breakwater at uh, Le Grand Mont. And uh, that silver hull that they've got this particular one in is, is, is really quite remarkable. It, it's a handsome boat. It's, it's got a lot of very straight lines on it. Now, <clears throat> you'll see in the comparative here, it has massive upwind sail area, uh, beating out the nearest one by at least 40 square meters. Um, and what's uh, equally interesting is, um, you know, the pricing on a boat of this size. This is high tech, basalt fibers, epoxy, uh, and it's um, just a, a wee bit less than the Outremer 55. And it's a, it's a 54, very heavily laden with technology. This is where it really shines. 12.8 ton. So, I mean, that is almost, uh, you know, four ton less than uh, the Outremer and uh, 1.3 ton, I think, less than the lowest one in this grouping, which was, uh, the next lowest one was the MC, the McConaughey 55. Um, the dimensions of the boat, it is, it, it has the longest hull to um, beam ratio of the group and um, it has a lot of green on the comparative chart here. I also had to add another line for battery pack capacity because this is a full electric boat with a substantial battery pack that is bigger than the Wave 50, the only other one that we've looked at. Now coming on board the back transom has dropped and this creates a massive rear space um, that that really belies the, the note that much of the rear cockpit has been taken up by the saloon. And um, you'll see that uh, rear davit system down and then up as you see it here. Um, very, very convenient, very unique in the way it's done. So you sort of get the best of both worlds, that swim platform plus the convenience of a davit raise as opposed to trying to drive a dinghy onto a a uh, hydraulic platform in a, in a heavy sea. Moving uh, into the saloon, I mean, the only way you can 
describe this as space and light, space and light. Uh, you'll see the uh, garage door up here, similar to the Bali, except executed uh, in a far more rugged manner, I would say, and, and a little more aesthetically pleasing when it's up and down. Um, but wow, does it ever open up the space in this. Now look on the back wall there, you'll see uh, the plotter uh, has been replicated on the big screen. You have what I love here, both a seating area for meals and a separate um, uh, settee uh, lounging area. I hate having to sit at the dinner table no matter what. Um, and, and it's an entire wall of windows there, so you can really open this wide open. Uh, the kitchen is, you know, very spacious. It also, you're able to contain yourself a little bit. What I'd really like to see though, would be um, a little more elegance. Maybe it's called the elegance package. Um, Windaloo on their first go is, is very much uh, ultra modern, sporty French. Uh, a lot of whites, a lot of um, sort of artificial surfaces, very clean. I'm old and I like things a little more traditional. Uh, something like we see here uh, with uh, a lot more veneers, uh, a little bit more of a balance and a warmth. Um, it, to me, adds a sense of warmth, comfort and home. It also creates a perception of quality that is missing when it's just the straight uh, sort of plastics and whites that are, are showing up. So um, if we could look at something like that, an elegance package, I'd be over the moon. Now, this is unbelievable, this front cockpit. I, before I stepped on board this vessel, I really didn't know what to make of this. Um, I, I thought, gosh, I don't know. I can see that it kind of extends the living area into a cockpit style area that you could use at anchor, but what, what's the visibility gonna be like? What are you gonna do? Now, Elka, who is uh, Windaloo's secret weapon on the sales side, who I've chatted with online for about two years, said, look, David, just sit in that corner seat right there and grab the wheel and tell me what you think. And so that's what I did. I sat here, I grabbed the wheel and I started to look around and I was gobstruck. Uh, I mean, you look up, you can see right through the beautiful windows that they have in the ceiling to all your sails. You look around, you can see both bows. You look further around, you can see all the way back to the, um, to, to the uh, stern um, um, uh, outer edges. And you have, it doesn't make sense, but you have a greater sense of visibility and control uh, than you do in just about any other helm position. And I, I know that sounds ridiculous where we're sitting here, but that's what I felt when I was standing in this cockpit. The other thing is that all your lines are right there coming straight down from the mast. Uh, your friction is reduced. You have um, a forward interior access to your bow, which I, from a safety perspective and just a comfort perspective, I absolutely love. Uh, they've done a great job with uh, indirect lighting here. There's Elka, she's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and they're working on uh, certain other areas to contain the lines a little bit more so the wet doesn't get in. Now heading down into the, uh, the port uh, um, hull, uh, coming around this, uh, <laughs> this owner's cabin, look at the window. Um, you, you know, first of all, you've got a nice little seat there. You've got um, tremendous indirect lighting, nice high ceiling, uh, and then this continuous window. I mean, your sense of comfort and space is spectacular. Um, you, you almost have a, a full walk around, um, but certainly you can easily get to the head of the bed to properly make it, which you know is one of my bugaboos. Again, I would love to see an elegance package with a lot more veneer. Um, you don't have to add a lot of weight, but you can see this is definitely the taste of probably a younger individual. I would love to have this looking uh, a lot more, um, elegant is how I see it. I'd also like to see a different washer dryer. That one's just too small. Um, you know, remember this is what would Sylvia like? 
and Sylvia wants a bigger washer dryer. And I'm sure there's a space for it here. Um, you got great storage, love the escape hatch window. It looks so cool sitting there. Um, and they've used mirrors in a, in a good way. Uh, under the bed, I'd rather see some kind of a, a hatch over that storage under the bed. I know a lot of manufacturers are leaving it open. I just think it looks unfinished. Um, so you can also see the glow of the indirect lighting here. They've got it in the red mode, which would be fantastic for, uh, for nighttime viewing, um, keeping your, your, your um, night sight. Uh, but a lot of it, which is really cool. You can see it underneath the, 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 cab, uh, the cabinet lip and you know how much I love direct lighting. I, I think they've done a wonderful job here. Again, on the upholstery, why do, does every sailboat have to all of a sudden be sparse? Why not upholstery that has a bit of zip to it? Um, can you imagine that style right there? It would be fantastic. Uh, heading down into the guest hall now. Uh, so over here, again, you have uh, a similar cabin, although it does not go all the way in like the other one does. So it's a little bit smaller, but still with those windows, look at all that hanging space. Again, lots of room for my imaginary lifestyle and those trips to the casino in Monaco in my tuxedo. It's got to be able to hang and, and Mrs. Orton's dresses have to be able to hang. So. Hats off to Windaloo for the, the practicality and the storage here. Uh, again, love the style and the feel of that forward guest cabin with the round window. I just think they've done such a great job of turning the escape hatch into a, really a feature of, of, of this, uh, this cabin. So you can see, you're, you're never going to feel claustrophobic in there. Huge headroom, lots of window space, great ventilation. So heading back up, into the saloon. Um, again, really like the kitchen. This, this, the other thing about the forward helm is you open up those giant doors and it becomes part of your living space. So you have this huge living area. Um, heading up the, uh, the side walkways, um, you can see that uh, the hatches aren't recessed, but that's fine. Um, nice, uh, really tall mast. You do have very high air draft on this, which explains that 40 plus square meters extra of, of upwind sail area. Um, but I mean, really a handsome looking rig, uh, really, really elegant on the uh, on the outer decks. I'd probably put a flexi peak all the way up here. Now look at the solar. The solar on this thing is absolutely mind bending. It is absolutely huge, acres of solar. Oh, and by the way, you can put walkable solar on the, on the deck of the front of the hulls as well. Um, now, idea corner here at Camp David. Uh, the, the thing I find that I've heard talking to folks is that an upper uh, um, fly line, not a flybridge, not a place where you would even sit underway, but a fly lounge up there when you're at anchor is the gathering point for anybody who's on a boat. Now, the only real performance boat that has one might be a Neil 51. And I've spoken to owners as I was heading out of La Grande Motte and, and they said, absolutely, they've owned performance boats before and, and now they own this one and everybody gathers on that upper deck. Now. How do you do that without windage, weight, uh, raising the, 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 the boom, losing your sail area, your precious sail area? Well, believe it or not, our friends at Access Catamaran figured out at least part of the solution. And they have replaced that convertible top in their 15 with this uh, low profile fly lounge. As you can tell, they have not raised the boom an inch. What they do is they Hold the boom over when you're at anchor and hold it there with a restraining line and then they pop these seats up. And as a result, you have your cake and eat it too. Now, what I would do to really have your cake and eat it too is um, the one thing you're missing here is you're missing your uh, solar area that you've lost. But if we simply create the seats so they fold correctly, you can have your cake and eat it too. There's your solar area. There's your upper fly lounge. 
everybody's happy. So just a quick thought for, for the, the designers out there from an armchair and able architect here. It's a thought, it's free, use it, let's go. Um, again, look at the solar. Uh, you can see the uh, retractable um, shades there, uh, glass sections in the uh, front cockpit. You can pull those back, roll up the front window, and you've got um, the, the, the breeze blowing through your hair. Um, big, long um, uh, trampolines. Uh, your saloon area, compared to how length is, is, is quite a good ratio. So this is going to be a fast boat. Um, and indeed, Alco was telling me on their uh, tests after this show, uh, this boat was just flying. 12.8 ton with massive sail area, thin hulls, um, great beam to uh, length ratio. Uh, this thing is, is meant to go. Um, so let's have a quick look at the score here. Now, I've called this the Dave score in honor of the Doug score from Doug DeMero. Uh, but truly, scores are, I, I hesitate whether even to bring in a score because it's like scoring a, a Van Gogh or a Monet. I mean, how do you score it? It's a different picture to everybody who looks at it. But bearing in mind, the purpose of my channel is to find that boat that will make my wife feel that she hasn't left all civilization behind, that it truly is a condo traveling across the water, and yet also satisfies my innate desires for some performance and uh, light wind sailing, all of these things. So you gotta take this from that perspective. That's what the Dave score, and that's why I use the word Dave score. I was gonna call it a Sylvia score, but there's more geeky in here than Sylvia would tolerate, so we'll call it a Dave score. So, uh, on elegance, uh, again, very subjective. On the interior, uh, I give it a five out of 10. So fantastic sense of space and light, too stark and modern for me. Obvious laminates in use uh, as opposed to veneers and the upholstery felt a little loose. The exterior gave it a seven out of 10. It's really nice. It's clean with powerful lines, but it felt a little too square. From a comfort sense in the interior, I gave it an eight out of 10 because again, that fantastic sense of space and light. Uh, the separate eating area and lounge areas, I love that. The helm could be part, it can be part of the living area, which expands out way open. And um, the that window in the owner's cabin is spectacular. The only sort of little off bit might have been, I'd love it to be a walk around berth. Now, the drop down on the exterior, that drop down transom and the huge sugar scoops, the interior bow access and all that solar, solar, solar gave it a seven out of 10. Uh, it's got a forward cockpit, sort of. Uh, it's not like say a Leopard or the Wave 50 where it's truly out there, but it's sort of there. So anyways, seven out of 10 on that, it's a good score. The um, quality, Again, very subjective. I'm not a boat builder and I'm no carpenter and I'm not technical and I'm not an engineer. So all I can give you are my subjective feelings from these boats. And the quality to me felt like a solid seven out of 10, which when you consider this is hull number one, uh, is pretty epic. Uh, it felt strong with great components and gear. It needed to me a little greater polish to reinforce the perception of quality. Uh, performance, when you look at uh, the fact that it's 1.7 ton lighter than the lightest one in, in the comparative category and 41 square meters greater in upwind sail area, along with those slim hulls and that beam to, to length ratio, this thing is gonna fly. Again, I haven't test sailed it yet. I've only heard through Elka and some of the team, but the numbers make sense. Uh, the lazy sailor category, this is me. So I'm gonna be 65, 66 when I'm doing this. I'm a pretty much automation guy. Uh, I'm a lazy sailor. So the lazy sailor score on this boat is a seven out of 10. It has electric winches, fantastic visibility and helm position, easy, easy boom access. I mean, really easy boom access. The, the, the drawbacks, no electric furlers. Please comments, don't go crazy with me. Uh, Oyster and Privilege use them just fine. Uh, no bow thruster or dock mate, which to me, that's the marriage saver. Uh, don't want to fight it, just want to do it. 
Uh, the condo category, this is for Sylvia. So I gave it a solid seven out of 10. The sense of space and openness is fantastic. You got all the electricity uh, for all the toys that Mrs. Orton could want, uh, along with the size, the master cabin and windows and all that storage gave this a really strong condo score. The geek score, this is for me. Solar, 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 loved it. There's an eight out of 10 geek score on this. Even on the, uh, the, the hull deck, wonderful electric drive with regen. They just didn't go with your average electric drive like everybody else does, one of the two biggies. They tried that, went through a process and found a very reliable electric drive with regen. Big screen plotter, loved how they turned the big screen into a plotter. I know it's easy to do, but very few people do it. We've seen it on uh, Sailing Great Circle where he's put a, a, a wide screen computer screen up on the helm, uh, but this is wickedly cool. Um, and uh, the basalt fiber hulls, I think is fantastic, especially given what they've done with the weight. Uh, and factory optional 800 watt in wind gen. So a lot of toys and goodies on here. Um, value for the money, I'll give it a six out of 10. It's a touch less than Nutramare 55, which probably is a more mature boat. Um, uh, so, you know, coming in as a, as a new entry, it probably could use a wee bit of a discount, but I mean, when you look at all the other pluses on the tech side and the space side, there's again, this is wildly subjective and, and, and there's good justification. This gives us a total of 70 out of 100 for the Dave score. Okay, moving to Yacht World. Uh, I threw this section in here um, knowing that obviously we've already looked at the new comparatives here. Excuse me. We've looked at the new comparatives here, um, and uh, we could go to Yacht World and see what a used Windaloo is, except there are no used Windaloo 54s. This was the hull number one, and uh, we're looking at it uh, fresh out of the factory. So we've gone to Yacht World and had a look around at what is available that might be comparable. And here we've got a, a 2019 Katana 53. And uh, at 1.5 US, um, you know, that's a three-year-old boat now, um, 53, so it's a foot less. It doesn't have all the goodies. Uh, you know, the Katana name is still okay, not quite what it was, but um, I would say the new Windaloo, uh, so if we're at uh, sort of uh, one, one and a half news, you add about a half more for sail away, so, uh, we're somewhere around two or something, two, two on a, on a new Windaloo. Um, this is an okay value, uh, not bad. Here we've got the Renegade R5 and it's a 2020. Um, I mean, at 1.9, uh, it, it's an equivalent sort of technology boat, although it doesn't have some of the features the Windaloo has. I wouldn't say it's anywhere near uh, the condo score um, and, and uh, sort of equivalent on uh, uh, elegance and comfort. Uh, actually, Windaloo would be more comfortable. So I'd probably uh, stick with the Windaloo on this one. And uh, then we've got the Broad Blue, uh, which is a wildly unique boat. Um, you, you just don't have the volumes that Windaloo is going to put out there. So you're not going to have uh, sort of the, the comfort. Uh, but it's um, it's a pretty cool boat. It's uh, I'd say on the elegance and comfort score, it's it's pretty damn solid. Uh, the helm position is completely up to your taste. Uh, it it looks pretty wild, but and if wild's what you want, wild's what you'll get. So uh, that is the uh, completion of our video on the Windaloo 54. I do hope you've liked it. Uh, if you would, please subscribe. Uh, share this, comment, love the interaction with the audience, and uh, I look forward to having another video for you next week. So, uh, from Southern Rhone and uh, Chateau Nuftapap, cheers, and thank you Elka and the entire Windaloo team.